for uh, attending this uh, convention. This is a very exciting moment. We are going through a uh, very difficult time. Uh, like many other uh, Islamic gatherings is uh, in a, a different way of approaching to all of you. <clears throat> but Alhamdulillah, we are blessed to have a team of volunteers, a team of dedicated workers, and leaders of Muslim community, including the two and three or four American Muslim representatives who are our pride, who are the people whom we um, take the pride uh, to be our representative. As the newly elected president of Islamic Circle of North America, uh, I'm going to talk a little bit This often, uh, ICNA is, has a history of five decades of service and work and dedication. And uh, Alhamdulillah, um, I, I always say that IGNA is a one-stop shop. People who want to do dawa work, IGNA has all to um, the fold of Islam is the work which Ikna have done for the last five decades. Whether it's the work of Tarbiya, of educating American Muslims, uh, the ILF and Ikna Tarbiya has done a phenomenal job. Whether it's the service of humanity, the core essence of our deen, helping hand USA and Ikna relief have produced phenomenal results. Helping Hand working in 51 different countries in the world have served millions and millions. Those 19,000 orphans throughout the world, those hundreds and thousands of refugees, whether they are Somalia, whether they are Kenya, whether Jordan, whether Lebanon, Rohingya, you just go every refugee camp, you will see the presence of American Muslims being represented by Helping Hand USA. During COVID-19, when refugee, the whole world was devoid of PPE, the basic support to help fight against this virus. The refugees were the people who were the most deprived, most underprivileged, and most marginalized. Helping Hand made sure that these marginalized and underprivileged population of Muslim world also get the benefit of those PPE and protection against this virus. Ikna Relief, Ikna Relief working in hundreds and hundreds of these cities, opening these 23 women shelter home, opening these numerous food pantries, serving more than 100,000 families only during this COVID time, have come up with some work which is like, which was so needed during this COVID time. Our free clinics have provided free medical consultation and now we plan to provide those vaccinations. Those Feed the Hungry programs, those disaster relief programs, ICNA relief is the forefront and the pride of American Muslims. If I keep going on, I may miss the introduction of a very important person who is going to talk to you next. Um, this person whom I'm going to introduce is uh, no stranger to American Muslims and actually no stranger to Muslim across the world. This girl who was, who migrated and fled her country at eight years of age from Somalia and stayed in Kenya uh, as a refugee because of the conditions in Somalia, came to United States in 1990 and where uh, in 1990s, where her grandfather, who had a vision and who told her to get involved in politics. This is someone who have made us all proud. I was listening with my wife the last few minutes of election campaign when the most powerful man on the earth, the president of United States, 
was giving his final words, final speech of election campaign in Michigan. What was he talking about? He was talking about a woman whom I think he was afraid of all four years of his presidency. Uh, but uh, he was mentioning this congresswoman repeatedly, repeatedly. He tried to mock her. He tried to uh, make her feel bad. He tried to make fun of her faith. But you know, guess what? This sister of Islam, this American Muslim woman made all us proud. She followed the guidelines of Islam. Waqala innani muslimin. That she stood up for her faith. She stood up for her beliefs. She stood up against the bullying of a very powerful man. And in the end, the powerful man and the bully is gone. But our sister, the, we are all proud of, is there. Congressman Ilan Umar, who was uh, elected in 2018 for the first time in the um, district, uh, fifth district of Minnesota, then re got re-elected again in 2020. She was the first Somali American woman to be elected to Congress. She was the first woman of color to represent uh, Minnesota. And one of the two Muslim women, first two Muslim women who represented American Muslims in the Congress. So please give a warm welcome, all prayers, all the praises for our sister who did so well on behalf of ICNA as the president of ICNA. I welcome you sister and I hope we will continue to support you and we, I hope you will continue to be as brave as you, as you have been and may Allah bless you, uh, sister Ilan Umar for you. Well, salam alaikum, everyone. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Uh, Ansari. And thank you to the Islamic Circle of North America for inviting me to talk with you all today. I wanted to give a special shout out to my sister and colleague, Sheila Jackson Lee. I know that if she hasn't already spoken that she'll be gracing you with her presence as well. She has not only been an ally to me, but she's been ally to Muslims across this country. I am um, really excited to be here with you all. As Dr. Ansari said, we've all been through a lot with this president. Um, we've seen uh, an executive order panning, banning the travel uh, from countries of many of us um, where our families and friends are in uh, and myself specifically have been uh, impacted as I am a Somali and come from one of the, the countries that is on the Muslim ban. An administration that has emboldened white supremacists and had made racist and Islamophobia, Islamophobia um, be really sort of normalized and, and has gained confidence um, in, in our streets and in our public rhetoric. He's also peddled in foreign policy that has expanded the sales of weapons used to slaughter civilians in Yemen that is uh, enabled the Israeli government to move down a path towards the annexation of uh, Palestine, a pandemic that has enabled a reckless president that has killed hundreds of thousands of Americans, including my own father. But despite all of this, the overwhelming emotion that I feel and we should all be feeling is one of pride. Pride in what our community has done in the face of so much hate and repression. Our community has stood tall and committed ourselves to increasing our civic engagement, not shying away from the public sphere. Every year in my home state of Minnesota, the Muslim community, specifically the Somali community that I come from, participates in our voting process in record numbers because we see it as part of our duty as members of a democratic society. We do this because we know that our experiment in democracy was founded on the idea that the oppressed and the afflicted from around the world could one day control their own destiny. 
that is the essence of American ideal, and that is what brought so many of us to its shores. This idea is very real for many of us, having experienced grave injustices to the extent of fleeing our own home, my family got through each day with the hope that one day, finding a better life for us and our loved ones. <clears throat> my father would hope aloud that uh, we will one day have the possibility of free existence. He left me enamored by the mere concept of democratic participation. He cultivated my passion and a life dedicated to public service and the betterment of those without. And I clearly was not the only one compelled by this story. Nationwide, a staggering 95% of eligible Muslim voters voted in 2018. While we don't know the exact number yet, we know that Muslim voters turned out uh, at the very highest numbers this year. Five states, Colorado, Delaware, Florida, Oklahoma, and Wisconsin elected their first Muslim elected officials in this cycle. Muslims increased engagement in American politics is a sentiment of our resilience. The changing nature of political relationships to us is a testament of our collective power. You might remember a few years ago when a group of white men bombed the Dar al Farouk Islamic Center in Bloomington, Minnesota. They did this explicitly to intimidate Muslims from voting. And the Muslims in Minnesota responded by having Muslims show up to vote in ways they've never done before. Last week, the man who was responsible, Michael Hari, was convicted and sentenced to 35 years for his crimes. I think two of the hundreds, maybe thousands of death threats I and my sister, my sister Rashida Talib receive on a regular basis. Yes, each one is, is disturbing, but we are never frightened and we will never let them shut us up. And also this past week, the Supreme Court ruled that three Muslim men who were placed on a no-fly zone under President Obama though they were not suspect of any crimes, had the right to sue the FBI for violating their civil rights. They are, these are the products of shifting American landscape, one where Muslim Americans are not afraid to make their voices heard and use their communal power to make our community safer and more vibrant for everyone. This is not a period of doom and gloom. This is exactly when we should hold our heads up high and look to the future with optimism. Our story is fundamentally American story. This should make us proud. And our commitment to making change in our community shouldn't stop with criminal justice or with politics. Our commitment to social justice remains clear too. As millions of Americans celebrate holidays graciously and with generosity, I want to remind all of you how important these qualities are for us too. Though we might not celebrate Christmas, our dedication to charity and to helping our fellow Americans should remain strong through this season. I'm reminded of the Muslim Americans in Minneapolis who partnered with us when the call went out for help during the opening months of the COVID-19 pandemic. They worked with us in delivering 20 tons of food and home goods in Minnesota to those in need. I'm reminded of the dozens of Muslims in my district who took time from their schedules to help register friends and neighbors to vote and help drive people to the polls hundreds at a times who couldn't get there on their own. Because that means for us to be a good main member of our faith what it means for us to be American ourselves. It's our commitment, not just to being strong within our own communities, but being part of the American community in itself. So I hope we remember this commitment throughout the next presidential administration and for years to come. And I wanna leave you all with this quote 
because I remember it often. I remember what Martha Luther King Jr. said. We might have come on different ships, but we are all in the same boat now. Thank you so much. Thank you for your commitment to our community, to our country, to our society, to our democracy, and to those of us who make the sacrifice to serve you in elected office. Thank you very much. A very uh, uh, good moment and proud moment for us to be part of this convention and the Ignacy program, the organization uh, for which we are all speaking. We stand under Ignacy SJ to suggest the one who did not have the voice and all the, for last six to eight months, Ignacy SJ has stood up to fight for the rights of those I would like to thank the Congresswoman uh, for sharing her perspective and her time with ICNA today, uh, as well as uh, we pray that Allah grants her father the best in the Akhira. We also thank Dr. Mohsen Ansari uh, and congratulate him on his recent election uh, to be the president of ICNA, as well as the president of the USCMO for the next term, inshallah. I would now like to introduce our next speaker, who is Tahir Javid. Uh, Tahir Javid is a business magnate, investor, and, and a philanthropist. His success exemplifies the American dream, with a little more than his instincts and the courage to follow them. He has developed a vertically integrated corporate enterprise ac across wholesale retail, healthcare services, real estate, and agricultural se sectors that today employs thousands of people across the globe. Over the years, Nair Javid has given back to his community with a myriad of initiatives for the benefit of the most vulnerable segments of society. Underscoring his passion for a more equitable and just society, Nair Javid is an active member of the Democratic Party and a diligent defender of the U.S. and Pakistan relationship. With that, I ask him to take it from here to share a few words, as well as introduce our next elected official joining us today to discuss race relations in America, inshallah. All right, assalamu alaikum. Can you guys hear me? Yes, we can hear you. I think you may need right. to adjust your camera, inshallah. I don't know how I can adjust that. It looks like upside down. But anyway, assalamu alaikum. Good evening. Uh, I really appreciate ICNA and its leadership, Dr. Mohsen Ansari, uh, Zahid Bukhari Saab, Naeem Beg, Javed Siddiqui Saab, and Asam Atsad for continuing doing these kind of programs to inspire all of us. The concept, concept of social justice is the beating heart of Islam. Our faith teaches us compassion for the community, not just for our religious community, but all those in our neighborhood, in our cities, in our countries, and in, in our offices. Uh, Islam instructs us to treat all people equally without discrimination of race or gender. And where we see witness uh, inequality, it is our duty to condemn it without any hesitation. Unfortunately, we see a great deal of inequality in America today, particularly when it comes to race relations. According to the Pew Society, the most American believe in believe it is a privilege to be a white in the United States. Then the minority, uh, then a minority uh, racial group. And 58% people in America believe in much more common to hear racist views expressed in society. We have had decisive uh, and hateful administration that is luckily on its way out, continue to amplify 
the dangerous rhetoric over four over the four year period from the devastating muslim ban there there were uh, or there were fine people uh, while the supremacist marching in the charlotte virginia donald trump has done a terrifying amount of dangers danger to race relations in this country it has tarnished our image to the rest of the world luckily we had people throughout the time continued speaking and and, and kind of working against all these odds uh, our surrogate for hillary clinton and i have seen that uh, forehand that the next four years we will have a lot of situation among uh, the races in the country uh, when Donald Trump was taken uh, uh, taken oath, I was taken oath that I would spend my energy, time, and resources to prevent all what he is going to bring in this country. Well, majority of the time, my partner in this work was my dear friend, Congressman Sheila Jackson Lee. Congressman Sheila Jackson Lee is an influential and forceful voice in D.C. She is serving her 13th uh, uh, term as a congressperson. Uh, from uh, Congressional District 18, which is in Texas and country uh, in, in the in the heart of uh, uh, the energy capital. Uh, she is called voice of reason for several reasons, uh, whether it's supervising the uh, reauthorization of the, the violence against women or calling out Peter King for leading Islamophobic hearing or supporting the Matthew Shepard or James Byrd Jr. Hate Crime Prevention Act, you can always expect the Congresswoman to be on the front line demanding uh, justice for all. She worked closely with me on Congressional Pakistan Caucus, which we have uh, brought to the level where uh, the two countries' relationship is, uh, is getting better every day. Apart from all, she has given so much opportunities to minorities and Muslims and Pakistani Americans in this country as their, her staffers or getting them internship on the Hill, as we ask her. Uh, she is being rated as the top 50 most effective lawmaker in this country. Before any delay, I would request my dear friend to speak to us and also discuss with us how she's working hard and trying to get as many Muslims in this next administration. Uh, Congressman Sheila Jackson Lee. I believe the Congresswoman is still joining. Uh, so in the meantime, we're going to promote uh, the CSJ video once more. And once she joins, we'll put her on screen, inshallah. And we apologize for the difficulties for a moment. And thank you, Brother Zahir Javid, for the beautiful remarks. Since 1998, Why Islam has grown to become one of the world's leading educational resources on authentic Islam. Why Islam has developed several programs that provide accurate information about Islam while dispelling misconceptions and stereotypes. Over 10,000 hotline calls, 1.3 million annual visits to the Why Islam website, 500,000 likes on Facebook, 100,000 YouTube subscribers, 16.5 million views on YouTube, more than 300 shahadas a year, 20,000 free Qur'ans distributed, 500,000 brochures, information in multiple languages, hundreds of dawah booths and billboards across 50 cities. Tired of hearing stereotypes about Islam? Do your part in fighting Islamophobia. Donate today. Yeah, yeah I, I'm...
Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. As Allah says in Quran, let there rise among you from a group of people, inviting to all that is good, enjoining what is right and forbidding what is evil. I love to hear that return of the salam that we need from one another consistently because this sister, sisterhood, this connection that we have with one another is what helps us get through day by day. It's what helps us get through with the ups and the downs and the craziness of life. Exactly keeping this divine message and the responsibility of spreading this divine message, six pioneer sisters established Ikna Sisters Wing on 9th July, 1978. It was established to create Islamic education and cultural awareness among Muslims and non-Muslim women alike. The sisters of Ikna are like family, and it's one of the few places where I feel safe in the Muslim community. I, I trust them, and I love them, and I want to really congratulate them for taking this next step. Currently, close to 2,000 sisters members are working nationally to serve the community directly or indirectly. Give or take 160 study circles are currently ongoing with 3,000 attendees. And uncountable outreach efforts are being done in a community near you, like hijab day event, revert conferences, open mosque days, relief and dawa booths in bazaars, in libraries, and universities. Today, Ikna sisters are proud to say that they are grassroots level organization. You can find us in every big city, online and on Facebook. We provide education and training skills to sisters who are interested in the comfort of their homes and communities. We have something for everyone. For sisters who love reading magazines, Ikna sisters publishes Noor magazine in two languages. Can you hear me? You're in the you're in the show, okay. Hello, can you hear me? Thank you so much for joining us. Please feel free to take it from here. Uh, can you can you guys hear me? Yes, we can I'm hear on you an airplane. Now, you're coming through very challenging. Can hardly hear you. Can you hear me? Yeah. So I should go on. Yes, ma'am. Please go ahead and start. Okay. Well, as you can see, I'm in one of these vessels called the airplane, but I did not want to miss uh, Inca. Dr. Saad, thank you so very much. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Zaved, and all of you who are there, and my dear friend who was on earlier, Ilhan Omar. Uh, we are collaborators and working together on many issues. And of course, we are officers in the Congressional Progressive Caucus. But what that really means for a diverse America is that we believe everyone should be heard and everyone's voice should be heard. I have to thank you for the powerful voice of Muslims uh, in the recent election. You absolutely made a difference and your voices should be heard as we move into the 117th Congress and of course, 2021. Uh, I'm a senior member of the House Judiciary Committee and a senior member on uh, the Homeland Security Committee and budget. Much of the work that's being done comes under our budget committee uh, and uh, we work together. But I think one of the important strides that has to be ha has to be overcome is racial injustice and structural racism. It impacts us all from the Muslim ban uh, to the uh, various uh, enhanced immigration policies that we had to suffer uh, through the past administration. I believe that one of the first starts will be under my committee and judiciary as well. Homeland Security and Judiciary is a real comprehensive immigration policy that is fair to all countries. Then, of course, I think it is important that we eliminate completely the Muslim ban uh, and particularly begin to work 
uh, more strongly as a co-chair, as a chair and co and the founder of the Pakistan caucus. I want us to be working strongly with Pakistan. I certainly want the administration to engage with Pakistan and Muslims around the world. My work involves criminal justice. And so I'll be working hard to pass the George Floyd Justice and Policing Act. That is more than just uh, encountering with police. It is talking about police and community and reimagining and dealing with giving the citizen respect uh, and as well uh, making sure that police have skills uh, and have the resources, but the community can design a public safety structure. At the same time, it ends racial profiling, which confronts uh, Muslims and others alike. Uh, it also uh, encourages uh, and uh, it emphasizes some of the tactics that shouldn't be used, like chokehold uh, and no-knock warrants. We could see that recently uh, with the terrible uh, situation that happened uh, to a black woman in Chicago uh, who suffered a no-knock warrant. So the George Floyd Justice and Policing Act and, uh, and legislation that I wish that you would help me pass, and that is H.R. 40. It is a commission, a commission to study and develop proposals for reparations. Finally, America should address the sinful act of slavery that has never been addressed and continues to impact the African-American community. But I think the most important point of my legislative agenda is going to be to ensure that voices are heard and that legislation that deals with the growing positive relationship between the Muslim world and the United States is strengthened. I'm in a number of caucuses, many of whom represent Muslim communities. And therefore, I will look forward to working with you to do so. Finally, let me thank you for your enormous charitable work, your work in Hurricane Harvey uh, that we've suffered, your work with COVID-19, your work in dealing with testing and new rice land has been instrumental, but many of you have been instrumental in helping suffering people through this terrible pandemic. I just came from a holiday effort for children where we turned no child away, no matter who they were. And so I continue to stand with you to ensure that one, there's justice, civil liberties and civil rights, uh, that Muslims stand equal in our community and as well that their voices are heard in a new administration led by President-elect Joe Biden and President, Vice President-elect Kamala Harris. Was a turn in American history that we want to make history. I think America is better than that. And I think we'll show that in the coming years. Please count on me working and collaborating with my friend uh, to engage in legislation that'll be constructive, eye-opening, and fair and just in a fair and just nation. Thank you all so very much for having me. I'm on my way back to Washington to engage uh, in the final writing and final summary and final vote of COVID-19 and what we call the government spending bill to bring more dollars back to our cities uh, and our counties, as well as to people who are suffering to survive COVID-19. I, I, I do want to say this. I did, because of the continuity of government and the numbers of members of Congress that have gotten COVID and been positive, uh, they uh, required us to take uh, the COVID test. I took mine publicly because I want people who might be questioning. I know there are a lot of doctors here uh, in the community, but I want everyone to know that this is a way that we're going to stop this terrible spread and to take COVID-19, particularly in minority communities, Black and Hispanic communities, they must, they must ease their fear and take the vaccine so we can get on the other side of COVID-19. Thank you all so very much for having me and blessings be upon you. Uh, thank you so much, Congresswoman Sheila Jackson Lee, uh, for sharing your perspective and, and your time with ICMA today. Uh, despite your schedule changing, and uh, we, we know it was a lot of uh, work to make it to the airport and come here on short notice, so we appreciate that. Um, and the commitment to this session is much appreciated on behalf of the community. So I hope you have a safe flight and that you have a successful journey uh, in regards to the COVID relief package. So thank you so much. 
I know you said kind words. Couldn't hear him, so I'll call you back to hear him some other time. I, could uh, you hear me? Okay. Thank you. Take care. Thank you now. so much. Bye bye. bye, -bye. Thank you very much.